Good evening. I'm honored to be with you tonight working for Catholic Charities. We get to live out the mission of Matthew 25, sheltering the homeless, feeding the hungry, and welcoming the stranger. Each year we provide help and hope to over 55,000 people in Maine. One of our 25 programs is the Refugee and Immigration Services Program. And for over 40 years and 20,000 new Mainers, we've been the sole provider of settling refugees. And last year we settled 684, allowing them to escape war, persecution, murder, torture, rape, and horrific living conditions. Refugees must pass the most complex vetting process of any person entering the U.S. The typical two-year process includes interviews, paperwork, screening from the FBI and Homeland Security, and the chances of getting selected to come to the United States is less than 1% of 1%. One such refugee is Kamar, one of our case managers. Kamar left the Civil War in Somalia in 1990. After 11 years in a refugee camp, she and only three of her, of her six children were accepted to come to the U.S. with her, without her husband. Her master's in accounting is not accepted here, but she obtained her degree in just two years. She's a strong and proud mother whose daughter recently graduated from Bates and is at med school, just got accepted, and her honor student son was on the state championships uh, soccer team. The UN High Commission for Refugees is in Geneva, Switzerland. They seek out and determine where people are in great need. Over 64 million people have been displaced due to war or brutality, and 23 million are declared as refugees, an enormous humanitarian crisis. I recently spoke to one of our Syrian families. The father shared he never knew where to run each day, whether it was from ISIS, the government, rebels, or jet-dropping bombs. He just wants his children to be safe a good education to work and to support people in the community. A particular refugee camp in Kenya is similar to the one Kamar and her family lived in. It's common that people live up to 20 years in such camps or even die there. While it's away from the conflicts that they left, these camps offer no electricity, no septic systems, no running water. Life in these camps is difficult. We can't imagine. The president sets the cap of how many refugees in the U.S. will receive, and for quite a few years, the cap's been between 50 and 70,000. President Obama set the cap this year to be 110, and a week ago, President Trump changed that cap to 50,000. There was a 120-day suspension of new arrivals, which started last week. In the past few years, many of our clients have come from two major regions. Central and East Africa has been much civil war and brutality, and these countries include Burundi, Democratic Republic of Congo, Somalia, Sudan, South Sudan, and Eritrea. Additionally, we've had arrivals from Middle East, including Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, Iran, and past Soviet republics. And over the past 40 years, we've placed dozens of people from dozens of countries. The federal government actually decides who comes here and where they are placed. Our role starts when they arrive at the airport. By regulation, we can take people in a community within 100 miles of the Portland office. The five communities that we settle mostly include Portland, Westbrook, Biddeford, Boston, Augusta. We recently have placed families in Thomaston and Hinckley due to employment and housing opportunities. This is what you see from the top of the stairs when you arrive at the Portland Jet Port. At the bottom of the stairs is where we greet our newly arrived Mainers. This is the first time they step on U.S. soil, the first time they see Maine the way life should be, the first time they step on freedom and opportunity. And this is what they look like the first time they step outside. <laughs> like us, most of our clients have never, like us, we freeze, and most of our clients have never seen snow, never worn gloves or hats. They don't know Maine from Florida, Montana from Hawaii. That's a major cultural shock, a major temperature shock. Welcome to Maine. <laughs> 90 is an important number for us. We have to provide core services to all our clients within 90 days. These services include housing, food, medical services, clothing, furniture, education, supportive services, and employment. Since they have to pay back their airline cost, they start here with debt. Welcome to America. <laughs> Many people ask, what do we get for our money? What do they get? They assume it's a lot, but actually it's quite small. Each person receives access to only $950 to begin their new lives. 
It's used for services such as rent, security, deposit, food, clothing, furniture, and all that we need to live. Core services on day one include medical services and affordable housing. These are additional challenges as housing has become one of the biggest difficulties in getting them connected. Each person has a case plan with goals regarding education and employment based on their experience and desires. Connecting refugees to employment and education is a key component towards self-sufficiency and community integration. We partner with over 30 employers who hire new Mainers. In the past 18 months, we've developed an employment partnership with Backyard Farms in Madison, Maine. They've been fabulous in welcoming, supporting, hiring, and training our new Mainers. On the right is Barquette from Somalia, with Stuart, the president of Backyard Farms. Another new partnership is the good folks at Goodwill Hinckley. They have opened up what is called Smith Cottage, and we see an older version of this old, uh, building. They offer affordable, clean, and safe housing for some of our new families. They also have gone above and beyond providing two trips per week for shopping, which allows time in the community and fellowship with others. We're proud and honored to live out the mission of welcoming the stranger. We hope you too welcome the stranger in your midst in a way that offers hope, care, and love. <laughs>